Good afternoon, everyone. My name is James Harper. I'm a PhD student from the University of Colorado Boulder, and I'm going to be telling you a little bit about a study that I performed with my research partner, IDE, in rural Cambodia, where we looked at how households make decisions when their pit, latrine pits fill up. And then we also looked at how to encourage them to uh, purchase a safe fecal sludge management solution when that does happen. So to give you a little bit of background on Cambodia, uh, latrine access has been improving markedly over the past 15 years, reaching approximately 50% in 2015. But unfortunately, FSM services have not followed suit and they are quite rare in rural Cambodia. So as a result, pits are still emptied unhygienically. So as is the theme for the, for the conference, is how can we safely manage all of this waste? So, the first step that we really need to do in this case is to understand the household's perspective. They're the ones that are making that decision when their pit fills up. So we really need to understand what do they do when that happens and really why, what are their motivators that go into that decision? So where the study was conducted was in Spiring province in southeastern Cambodia. So the first study objective was to really describe this FSM decision and the practices that result from that. And the way that we did that was through surveys. We surveyed over 800 households. And just to give you a little bit of background on this FSM decision, the choices of practices um, include self-emptying. That's where a latrine owner would either empty their pit themselves or have a friend or family member or even a neighbor empty it for them. Or they could hire a service, pay a, pay a professional. And the methods that they could use um, would be uh, using a bucket or a shovel. Um, that's called manual emptying. A pump would be mechanical emptying and a vacuum truck, which most of us are familiar with. Now they could also choose to not empty the pit and simply install a new one or revert to open defecation. Now this is obviously a simplified list of practices that are possible when a pit empties, but these are kind of the big ones that do tend to occur. So as the household, you really start to have to start considering, you know, which of these practices appeals to me more. And the way that we do that is through decision making. And there are lots of things that we consider. First off, what's going to be the outcome of these different practices? Or when we're considering one practice, what's going to be the outcome of this practice? That's the belief that we have. How is it going to make me feel when I do that? That's our attitude. What are others going to think of me when I do this? That's the social norms. How much does it cost? That's a, the, probably the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people. And of course, the willingness to pay, am I okay with that? And then a big one is our context. What do we know about the practices? How many kids do we have? Are we married? Where do we live? Is it, is it the right type of season, uh, right time of year to do this? So many things get factored into our decision-making process. And our survey touched on quite a few of these in different ways. And then, of course, out comes the practice, what we actually choose to do. And that's also something that our survey looked at. So taking a look at all the households that we surveyed, we found that most household members used a latrine regularly. About one in four experienced flooding at their household. Most households had good road access. And the latrines range in age from basically brand new at one month old all the way up to 31 years old with an average of five and a half years. So kind of a nice wide range of experiences with latrines here. In terms of design, most had one pit, and we encountered um, quite a few, 14%, that did what we're calling piercing their pit, and I'll go into more about that later on in the presentation. Most had a plan to empty, so these are households that had a latrine but had not uh, experienced a full latrine yet, but they had thought about what they were going to do uh, when that did happen. 77% planned to bucket, and 11% had considered it but weren't sure what they were going to do. And then really interestingly, we found that only 2% of households believed that a service provider uh, existed in their area to actually empty their pit when that did happen. And only half of those knew actually how to contact that service provider. So taking a look at the emptying practices that households had performed in the past, most had self-emptied, that's emptying themselves with a friend or family member, and they typically used a bucket. Now, despite these practices, most reported a good experience and only a few reported challenges that were related to having to empty too often. Now, the reasons for emptying, this is kind of the big question, why did you empty? 
or one of the big questions. Um, most emptied because their latrine had gotten to a state where it was not functional anymore. It was either too full or wouldn't flush, something along those lines. Also really interesting, 23% reported that they just emptied because their latrine smelled. This is something that we found in other studies in rural Cambodia that the stink of a latrine can be a big motivator in what they actually choose to do. Now in terms of disposal, most chose to dispose directly into a field, again, all, of course, untreated. Uh, and approximately one in five were actively emptying to fertilize their crops. And this is a holdover from the Khmer Rouge era um, that uh, effectively made people use uh, fecal sludge as a fertilizer. So this is a common practice in rural Cambodia. And then it goes also get, again, very interesting. Most plan to empty in the future how they've emptied before. So if you take all of this together, it really paints a picture of people that are happy with what they're doing, planning to continue doing what they're already doing, and then pretty much having some pretty dangerous practices, self-emptying by bucket, typically without any safety gear. So it really paints a picture for a difficulty with behavior change going, uh, going forward with fecal sludge management in rural Cambodia. Then I took a look at emptying rates. So these are the number of times a latrine was emptied per year of latrine ownership. And when I ran this analysis, I was amazed at how many relevant factors I found. Now, there's obviously too much to go into here, and these are just associations. So these are not, this doesn't show causality that these things caused more emptying or these things caused less emptying. But I want to dive into a few here and talk about what the results might mean. So, for example, I found that um, households that had good road access tended to empty more. And when you think about this, this might bring to mind convenience, right? Having a road nearby might make it easier to transport fecal sludge to a different location. But this also might just be a factor that the households that were nearer to roads were more affluent and it could therefore empty more often for a variety of reasons. Additionally, we found that self-emptiers using a pump tended to empty more often. And this is, this is likely a convenience factor. Again, pumps are easier to use than emptying manually. However, it might also have been that they simply needed to empty more often. They had purchased a pump because they found their latrine pit was filling up too quickly. These are some of the details that our survey did not get into and we hope to do in future research. Again, there's that fertilizing fields um, uh, increasing the number of empties. And then we also found that properties that had flooded emptied less. This might indicate that the households were uh, performing a practice called flooding out, which is where when a flood occurs, people will open up the, the tops of their lids. The floodwaters will naturally bring out fecal sludge and effectively empty their pits somewhat. Uh, and so that's, that's an um, association that we found. And we also found conversely uh, that the self-emptiers using buckets tended to empty less, which might be a factor of convenience, but also a factor of disgust and that this is a very dirty thing to do and they might just simply be doing out less because of that. So, Again, a lot of the, the reasons behind these associations um, are because our, our conjecture, but these associations could be used to help plan fecal sludge management behavior change campaigns or even services and, and products going forward. So then let's get back to the pierced pits. Okay, we found that 14% of households had what are called pierced pits. And this is basically an overflow hole that's installed into a pit's top ring that allows Fecal, uh, liquid fecal sludge to drain automatically as the pit fills up. And you can see one pictured here, there's a little, uh, you know, relatively short hose in this case um, coming out of the top of the pit, and that is liquid fecal sludge coming straight out of the pit untreated. So obviously this is a very dangerous pra practice. Um, surface release of black water is obviously not a great thing, particularly right next to a pit, which is typically near a household. We found that pierced pits were more common when a property flooded. So again, they're probably used to that surface release from the flooding. Um, uh, older latrines and uh, households that had uh, a member that worked a technical job such as a mason, which might imply that these were being installed by the actual household members themselves. So some, some, some interesting, interesting results here. So obviously some challenges going forward, um, improving the understanding that black water is dangerous, um, and then diving into more detail, why are people doing this? Understand the motivators for piercing pits. 
Now, in the second part of this study, we actually looked at, could we influence this decision-making process? We've already characterized it. We wanted to see if we could influence it. So IDEE came up with a, um, a device called a pit gauge, which is shown here. It's basically a float level uh, that sits on top of the liquid portion of the fecal sludge inside of the pit. And it's connected to a pipe that goes up and down with the uh, float level so that from the outside of the pit, you can actually see the sludge level within the pit. So as the sludge level rises, the pipe goes up and you can see that your sludge level in your pit is increasing. Now we wanted to test to see if the pit gauge could trigger demand for a safe FSM solution. In this case, we chose the alternating dual pit, which provides for safe emptying via storage treatment. So the question became, does a pit gauge trigger demand for an ADP? And an alternating dual pit is simply adding a pit onto a single pit latrine that's already installed. So we set up a study uh, protocol that um, gathered households with single pits. In the treatment region, 226 households were given uh, pit gauges free of charge. And then in the control, we had 429 households that did not have a pit gauge. And we, we wanted to see if the ADPs would be sold in different proportions between these two. So taking a look at sales, we had 237 ADPs sold over the course of the study. That's approximately 28% of the households, which indicated a nice high product demand for ADPs, which was great. We did find that households that had pit gauges uh, purchased ADPs more often, and we found fewer cancellations um, at households that uh, had pit gauges as well, indicating they probably thought about and bought into that fecal sludge management solution more than uh, the other households. So this might indicate that pit gauges are a great way to stimulate demand for safe fecal sludge management solutions. However, we did find some biases in our study design. Every month, researchers would go to households that had pit gauges to actually measure their sludge levels. We were, so we were measuring pit fill rates. And this likely introduced a bias in terms of a researcher coming to your household, probably gonna make you think about fecal sludge management a bit more than if they weren't doing that. Additionally, we found that the households that had pit gauges also interacted with their village chief uh, more often than households that did not. And so that likely influenced the purchase decision uh, with regard to ADP as well. So some key findings from our research, we found that self-emptying using buckets is extremely common and socially acceptable in rural Cambodia, which is gonna likely make behavior change very difficult going forward. We really need to address these reactive decisions. I've heard it um, um, called demand-driven decisions in other presentations here, uh, where households will wait until their pit is full in order before they actually decide what to do. And then also need, we need to address these methods of convenience. So a pierced pit is a good example of that. Now we found that households were generally aware of the different options they had when their pits filled, but the professional FSM services really weren't available in the rural context. We also found that we could trigger demand for safe FSM solutions, but the best method is still unknown and is likely gonna be highly contextual. So looking forward, we really need to understand these decision motivators across Cambodia, not just in this small province. Uh, and then using that information, we'll be able to develop and promote safe rural FSM solutions and practices going forward. So in terms of future work, I'm currently working on what I'm calling the FSM solution. And it's basically going to be a survey going across um, as much of Cambodia as I can. Uh, we're also gonna be using, uh, taking a look at um, similar topics, decision-making practices, decision-making and practices when fits fill. And I'm also gonna be using a discrete choice experiment to really understand what households prefer between the different methods available to them. So to accomplish this, I'm looking for more research partners. Um, so if you're interested, please let me know at the end of the talk. Now in terms of implementation, IDE is continuing to scale up uh, ADP sales uh, in their provinces in Cambodia, continuing to measure sludge levels, and they're testing pit gauge 2.0, which is designed more as a sludge level alarm and not so much for measurement. So thank you all very much for your time and attention. I'd be happy to answer any questions uh, and receive any, free, any feedback. Thanks very much.